If you're new to Seros, this is the place to start. Today, we're walking through Studio and how to go from a blank canvas to a published experience, no code required. Starting the homepage of the Seros admin, you'll see the Create button to quickly get started from a template, blank canvas, import, or create a folder. You'll also see some popular template options available directly below the Create button. These just scratch the surface though. We'll get into templates more later. Over in the Experience page, you'll see, you guessed it, all of your experiences. These can and most likely should be organized into folders to help keep things tidy. And I'll open up one of my experiences here and then hop into Studio. Once you're in Studio, you'll see a clean workspace with a few key areas. On the left side, we have the toolbar with text, shapes, images, and much more. I want to call out the Asset Library tool. This opens your Asset Library window where you can view your internal assets that you or members of your team have saved, as well as all of the Seros assets available. Here, you can simply drag and drop buttons, menus, carousels, or other highly used pieces of content directly onto your canvas. Beneath the search bar, you can select your canvas. This is where you can adjust the size, scaling, and fill color quickly. A little further down, we have the Layers panel. Open by default, it's where you can organize your content. So besides being able to make sure that your text is sitting above a background shape and fully visible, the Layers panel is where you manage your folders and groups. Folders are used in the Layers panel to organize and label your assets, which is great for grouping by section or content type. Groups are used to bundle multiple elements together. You can move or animate them as one, for example, and they become crucial for interactions that are applied to multiple elements, like a carousel or a pop-up button. Folders and groups serve different purposes, but both help keep your design clean and manageable. There's also the Pages panel to manage multi-page experiences. Over on the right side of the studio, we have three main tabs. The Design tab, where you can customize the style of your content by changing the size, shape, color, image effects, and much more. The Interact tab will add an on-click, on-hover, or on-view interactions to your content. With your asset selected, choose a trigger, then select an action. You can apply interactions to individual elements or groups for easy control. It's how you turn passive and static designs into something that people can explore and begin to interact with. The last tab is the Animate tab, where you can apply on-view and on-hide animations. You'll be able to choose from a variety of animation styles and effects, along with all the options needed to really customize things to perfectly fit your experience. To jump between applications, you can click the switcher icon in the top right, editor for making quick content updates, and markup for giving and receiving feedback. You've also got the settings panel to further fine tune your experience, SEO, social, and accessibility options. Next to that, there's the theme panel, where you can set default background colors, enable options to navigate pages, or even set your multi-page experience to auto-advance as a carousel. View options allow you to show or hide anchors, rulers, guides, grids, and more. The desktop icon in the top center will have additional icons next to it, where you can create tablet and mobile variants of your experience. And right beneath that, you'll see a new toolbar that appears when you select an object on your canvas. This is the Contextual Toolbar. As you build, the Contextual Toolbar changes based on what's selected, so you'll always have the most useful tools right at your fingertips. For text, you have AI-generated suggestions, hyperlinks, groups, layer position, copy and paste animations, and the option to add to the asset library. Images will allow you to crop, replace or remove backgrounds, along with the standard group, layer position, animations, and asset library tools. You can also share the experience with members of your team and give them creator, editor, reviewer, or viewer permissions. Before you publish, let's check out the preview window. This allows you to make sure all of your interactions and animations are functioning properly. It's a good idea to regularly preview your experience as you build. Once everything is ready, click Publish to get a shareable URL or an embed code. If you've made changes after publishing, simply click Update and they'll go live instantly. And that's your studio tour!
Now you've got everything you need to start building interactive content with total creative freedom. We covered a lot today, and if there's anything you want to learn more about, be sure to check out educate.saros.com, where you can find articles, courses, webinars, and videos covering everything we went over today in greater detail. And as always, if you can imagine it, you can make it in Saros.